on this episode of Still Loading. Get over here! everyone and welcome to this new episode of the still loading podcast i'm your host josh koval and today it is a 30th anniversary celebration something that makes all of us 30 plus year olds just feel so young feel so energetic and vibrant and not out of date in the slightest out of touch with uh what's cool in the slightest Uh, to be fair though the game series we are talking about today is still modern and is still relevant because the most recent release was 2019 i want to say was the most recent game um yep. we are talking about the original the game that started it off we are talking about mortal Kombat. I, I really had to pull myself back from yelling mortal Kombat. uh one i can't I really pull it off two my daughter is asleep in the next room over and i don't want a screaming infant uh wondering what's happening why her father has lost his mind um again but again you started it that's what i tell her every time like (laughs) you started it she doesn't understand me and then i just get lose my mind even more it's a really vicious cyclical cycle it, I guess it's redundant, cyclical and cycle. <laughs> Those cyclical cycles will get you. <laughs> cyclical cycles. Um, but no, we are here to talk Mortal Kombat. And with me, a true, uh, someone who, who, one of my closest friends, he's been on the show numerous times. He's also one of the people I know who's one of, is so incredibly passionate about the series. I had to have him on for this episode. It is Andrew from The Experience Point. Andrew, how are you doing today? I am doing pretty okay. I thought you were going to say something like, this person knows Mortal Kombat inside and out in ways that shouldn't be ethical or legal and should really seek professional help. Um, but I'll, I'll take the intro that you did give me. I appreciate that. Thank you. I mean, you could, you could, if you wanted to make that a Mortal Kombat reference, you could say knows Mortal Kombat inside and out so much that he that it, it is his own fatality. <laughs> yeah. Mortal Kombat will be the death of me in a good way well will inside and out me. like literally it took the inside of you and turned it outside that's it gotta did. be a fatality that's, somewhere in, in that's this why series, i look right? like this that's why <laughs> i look like this uh, t- so actually listeners you can check out a video version of this podcast over on the experience points youtube channel which there will be a link in the description or you can just search the experience point all over like check on my social media i'll have links to and i will tag andrew in the post for this episode but yeah we are here to talk mortal Kombat, a uh, 30th anniversary the game released initially in arcades on october 8th 1992 and we were joking around off mic andrew that i was going to list every single release date for all the different consoles i'm not going to do that i will at least list the sega genesis slash mega drive and the super nintendo just because those are the ones that by and large popularized it for the home consoles uh for the sega genesis slash mega drive it released on september 13th 1993 in north america and europe and for super nintendo it released on september 13th 1993 in north america october 28th 93 in europe and december 24th 93 in japan um so it's all over the place on super nintendo but pretty consistent for sega with that said, that's just kind of a brief overview. And we're th- actually, this episode is coming out the day after its 30th anniversary. This is coming out, sep- uh, sorry, not September, October 9th. So we have to talk Mortal Kombat. And I asked Andrew on here because, like I said, he is a huge Mortal Kombat fan. Um, every time I try to think of like some type of word involving Mortal Kombat, I have to think of some weird way to spell it because Mortal Kombat spells combat with a K. Um it just, I, but for some reason, in my head, I'm like, he's a huge fan. I was thinking P H A N, like, like all the Philly sports teams and everything. But <laughs> yeah, it's, I'm, my mind is getting all tangled in with these weird spellings of things. Anyway, that was an unnecessary tangent. So let's move on with the episode. <laughs> he's, he's, he's a father now, everyone. Remember that he's a father. He's, he's got dad brain sometimes, and it's okay. This is he's also my one hour of sleep. 
<laughs> this is also like my fourth episode in the last five days or something like that. So I'm, uh, I'm a little, I'm a little wiped to say the least. Um, Everybody no, sign we, up for the still loading Patreon so that Josh can take a vacation. <laughs> oh, duh, oh, I wish. Um, actually, but still sign up for the still loading Patreon because uh, the still bonding show for the $5 patrons where me and Erica Gwynn of Monster Madness are going through every James Bond movie one month at a time. So it'll be three. there's three bonus episodes a month right now for $5 patrons. So anyway, I'll go over the rest of that spiel later on. But in any case, Mortal Kombat and so hard not to yell that it just it's 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 burned into our psyches <laughs> and we have to do that <laughs> just whisper it you just do it mortal quietly kombat. what if you had like mortal kombat asmr it's like get over here <laughs> <laughs> okay. now what i'm going to do is i'm going to tear your spine out of your body and beat you to death with it is that okay with you <laughs> <laughs> hey, <Paladin. laughs> all the all, all the different weird things anyway um So we're going to start off, though, with some of our personal memories of Mortal Kombat. And I'm going to start off with mine, not because I normally like to go with my guests first, but I also like to save the best for last. And I'm starting off with mine because there's nothing here. I have very little to no (laughs) experience with Mortal Kombat. Uh, Most of my Mortal Kombat experience was maybe playing it at a friend's house when I was younger, which most kids that I knew didn't even have it because I grew up in a really Christian neighborhood and when you have a game that pretty much scared the government into forcing the video game industry to creating the ESRB, most religious parents aren't going to allow you to have that. So I was not, I did not have it. I didn't know anyone in my area really that had it. Um, so I, I didn't really get to experience as a kid. I would play it a little bit here and there. I re- I actually think I saw the Mortal Kombat movie before I played any of the games. And I oh, loved man. the movie. I loved that movie. Still, I still hold that that's the best video game movie of all time. You know, not what? just because I love Mortal Kombat. <laughs> No, it's a, it's a, it's it's a fun movie. Like objectively, it's not like the best, but it's still like a really fun movie. I was trying to see like when did it come out? It came out in 95. 95. And I'm like, mm, if I want to wait for an anniversary, I'd have to wait 3 more years. I don't know if I can wait that long. <laughs> yeah, I, just, I did I uh if you want to check out an episode retrospective that I did, I want to say a couple of years ago now, I think it was the 25th anniversary uh, for it. I sat down with some friends uh, over on the Experience Point YouTube, and we talked about it and, and had a great old time. The dude who directed that movie, by the way, also directed all the Resident Evil movies. Resident Evil. <laughs> yeah. and, and the one Monster Hunter movie. And he's married to the star of all those, Mila Jovovich. Yep. Why, why do you think she was in all, every single one? <laughs> uh, to be honest, like because I didn't, I don't have a lot of affinity for Resident Evil. Not because I don't think they're good games. I, just, I really haven't played them. I liked the movies, but I also didn't play the game. So I feel like that's probably why I liked the movies. Cause I'm kind <laughs> of in the same camp. But I anyway. liked the first two, I think. The, the first Resident Evil movie is, is a solid movie, I think, still. So. I actually liked the first three. Um, mm. And I, sorry, this is super random. And now I'm looking at Mila Jovovich's um, <laughs> uh, like dating history. I don't know. Who, her first husband was Sean Andrews. They got they were married for a year, uh, whatever, 92. And it was annulled in 92. So technically less than a year. She was married to Luke Besson, who is like a French <laughs> film wow. director who did like, yeah. Um, a lot of like, like the the fifth element which she yeah. was in right she was in the fifth element right she was yeah uh, she was um lilu yeah that's what i thought Lilu Dallas um, Multipath. so she was in that she only gets roles with her husband's movies yeah no i yeah. should say that <laughs> uh, the reason i always think of him though is he does i always associate him with like euro action thrillers because like he did he like worked on taken which is a kind of like it takes place in europe and whatnot and i feel like his production company does a bunch of stuff like that did he do leon the professional uh yes yes he did (laughs) which that's that's so funny that's a that's a problematic movie (laughs) oh is it oh geez yeah i mean it's well, well, Luke Luke Besson is a problematic director. He's been accused of multiple by multiple women of sexual abuse. So, well, uh, yeah, and so in, in that movie, it's like Jean Reno 
is like a hitman and he teaches a very young Natalie Portman. I think it was her first role oh, um, really? to like be a killer. Yeah. <laughs> it's like, oh, okay. Maybe this should have been like a comic or something. Like doing it with real people is just like gives me the heebie jeebies. I don't know. <laughs> anyway. We got way uh, off track. Okay. We went from <laughs> we went from the Mortal Kombat to Mortal Kombat movie to Paul, the director of Mortal Kombat to Mila Jovovich to her problematic ex-husband, Luke Besson. What a, that, this is what you're not paying for, folks. This is free content. Right. Um, well, here, let me um, six yes, degrees of Kevin your... Bacon and get okay. us back on track. So if we take one step back to Resident Evil, uh, Resident Evil Afterlife, um, Lyndon Ashby, who plays Johnny Cage in the Mortal Kombat movie, is in that. So <laughs> then we're back to Mortal Kombat. And hey, here we are, full circle. Wow. <laughs> the small yep. world man uh that that's pretty so well, that's a very roundabout way to show you how little experience i've had with mortal kombat we talked about <laughs> luke besson in my he history knows, of mortal kombat he knows so <laughs> little about mortal kombat that we ended up on <laughs> french action movies <laughs> Oh, um, and problematic well, Tat- natalie portman roles i was about to say tattily dortman right. i don't know what that was all about <laughs> That's that's her. That's sister. not even she, a spoonerism. Paddley Nortman would be her spoonerized name. Paddley. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Anyway, Andrew, what are your personal experiences with the original Mortal Kombat game and just kind of the franchise in general? We were talking a bit off mic that you have. You were saying you have more memories of other games, and that's fine. Let's talk about specifically this, but also how you kind of got into the series in general. Yeah. So. I'm a total fake fan. The first Mortal Kombat that I got into was Mortal Kombat 2. It was way down the line, you know. Mm-hmm. I didn't start from day one. I was like one of those bandwagon fans that got on. I mean, the- you <laughs> couldn't have. You would have been I'm like, what, kidding. three? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So, uh, what, 92? Yes. Was, it came out. I was... I, yeah, I was three years old. So clearly I didn't play that when it released. But uh, I do have like vague memories of going to like bowling alleys and arcades and stuff and like mm-hmm. seeing it there, um, seeing like the old older kids like playing it. This is when I when I got a little bit older. But the very first uh, video game I had, like not even, well, I got them both at the same time. First two video games I ever got, Sonic 2. And Mortal Kombat 2. I was probably six or seven. And like you said, the the religious upbringing, like my mom was not having that because, you know, by then the second game was out. So all the controversy was like, she thought it was the devil full, and all that. Yeah, full stuff. force. Yeah. Oh, yeah. And so my, my uncle who lived with us at the time was like, um, I, wanted a, I wanted a Sega um, just because I saw it on you know those commercials with the blast processing and all that stuff and i was like this looks awesome and uh, i didn't know anything about mortal Kombat, but um i just knew my mom didn't want me to play it and so he was like all right well i'll get it for myself (laughs) so he he got a sega genesis and mortal Kombat 2 and was like all right well let's play it like i didn't buy it for you i you know I, i bought it for me um and then he I, the reason that like I still love Sub Zero the most to this day is because when we first started playing, he would play as Sub Zero and he would annihilate me. And so for some reason, in my small child brain, I was like, "Oh, okay, he's Sub Zero is just the best character then." Mm-hmm. And so when my uncle wasn't home, I would secretly like play Mortal Kombat, and my mom wasn't home. <laughs> I would play Mortal Kombat as Sub Zero, and like got I got pretty good, and I eventually would beat him as Sub Zero, and he from then on like wouldn't play, <laughs> wouldn't play with me. <laughs> um, so, yeah, that's like my first memories of it was just like playing it with my uncle, like you know being sneaky, like we couldn't play it when mom was home because she would yell at him and whatever. And um, eventually, I think she found out, and you know my mom's. <laughs> what kind never of, gonna watch it? But what kind she's of kind of weird... a pushover? don't wake daddy version of, of video games is this remember that board game right. don't wake daddy oh yeah unfortunately what a, one, I what a weird name for a board game let's just be straight up like that's a weird name for a board game but to it just kind of made me think of like don't wake mommy like don't yeah. she can't find about mortal Kombat. pretty much because around that time was like i would be like sneakily watching like south park and like 
all the other things that you know what, what's weird i was just telling somebody about this the other day i was also not allowed to watch um like rugrats on nickelodeon really for some, for some reason i think so my mom didn't like me watching rocco's modern life either and i think it was that like kind of ugly like ren and stimpy early 90s mm-hmm art style that she thought it was like an adult show and she i just remember her always saying like you can't watch that show like oh that rugrat show oh the way the kids treat the parents oh it's awful the, like it's so the kids actually are really good to the parents it's just the one <laughs> no, kid so is not good. well so my cousin this wasn't allowed angelica. my cousin wasn't allowed to watch rugrats because of angelica because when she started watching rugrats like it's not that her parents wouldn't normally let her but when she started she started acting like angelica like she used angelica as a role model so her parents like nope you can't you can't watch rugrats because you just you you take it in too much like you think that's acceptable and i'm like yeah Yeah. that's a that's a fair point that's fair (laughs) yeah but eventually so like my mom's kind of a pushover which i feel bad saying (laughs) but is kind of the truth uh and so she found out you know she i don't know she came into the room and my uncle and i were ripping each other's heads off and whatever and she was just like ah you know Don't made like a big screen, deal about mom. it yeah right mom no uh, save yourself but, <laughs> yeah i came in here to stop him i promise <laughs> 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 he told me if i beat him 10 times in a row he'd stop playing this game forever which actually isn't far from the truth because he was like man this kid's beating me a little time i'm not, I'm not playing this anymore <laughs> Um, oh but yeah, it was like that era of, and, and we can talk about this later or now or whatever, but like that era of like, you know, it was before the internet. So everything in these games was like, if you weren't playing on the arcade where it had the moves listed out for you, you just had to figure stuff out. Yeah. So suddenly you're just like, oh, I, I just, you know, I froze this guy or like I shot this, like the harpoon out as Scorpion <laughs> or like fireballs as Liu Kang, whatever. And like when you lucked into a, a fatality, that's what like cemented it in for me. Cause I, and I'm sure most people have the same thing. Seeing like there were violent video games, but like this game was just on another level, like partially because of the digitized actors and how it like mm-hmm. looked so real. Even though like if you go back to like the original Mortal Kombat fatalities, it's not, they're like, so yeah. mild. It's so yeah. tame compared to what's in, cause everything's so like comically cartoonish looking. Yeah. Yeah, so I like lucking into fatalities and stuff. Oh, so what what I'll say is eventually um I got so hooked on Mortal Kombat playing the second one. I loved it. 3 hadn't come out yet, but it was about to. And um so my uncle took me to Funko Land one time, which was like an old video game store. I think they got bought by EB Games or Electronics Something Boutique. Something like that. Which yeah. Yeah. EB Games. Uh yeah, RIP Funko Land. That was that was my jam. And I was like, there's another Mortal Kombat. I don't know why I didn't realize like Mortal Kombat 2 wasn't the first game. <laughs> there's another one? That's awesome. <laughs> and so we got uh we we picked up that one and um it hurts me to say it, but it's hard to go back. Like after the second one, like that much bigger yeah. roster, much more interesting like levels and stuff, more story, more like variety of characters. It's hard to go back to that first one. It's a little bit sluggish, but for the importance of what it was. You know, I still was just like, yeah, it's cool to to play these crazy characters and like do the special moves and stuff. Um, but I, 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 I honestly didn't play it all that much. Like I just kept going back to two because that was like the one for me. Like it was a better one. Even when three came out, like I love that. I played it to death, but I always still to this day, like we'll go back to two. Like it just holds us so much of a special place in my heart. Well, eventually, I mean, technically Mortal Kombat 2 comes out a year later. So I'm probably just going to have to have you back on next year for oh, Mortal man, Kombat 2 for that game's 30th anniversary to make you feel doubly old. Um, yeah, that game I'll, came out in September of, oh, no, I'm sorry. I don't know exact date. Just as late 93. So at least according yeah. to Wikipedia, we'll, we'll find, they, I'll, I'll see if I can find an actual, um, you have a year uh, to, to find out. Yeah. Uh, we'll, we'll find yeah, they that. Had very, they had very quick, uh, turnaround times. I think the first game was made in like eight months with a team of like f- five people, something like that. I think it was. Yeah, I think you're right. I think it was like five. I was about to say eight, but no, I think you're right. According to just Googling it randomly, um, Mortal Kombat 2 <laughs> came out in 
June tw- on June twenty fifth, ninety three. So yeah, I don't know if that's like accurate. I don't. I can't find where they're getting at from. But anyway, that sounds right. But then the very next thing is initial release date April ninety three is like farther down on the page. They don't know. Well, they don't, April they don't might have been arcade. Home release might have been the summer. That might have been it. I. I don't know. Anyway, we're not here to talk yeah. about Mortal Kombat 2. We're yeah. here to talk about the original game. Um, but I'm uh, sorry. Are there any other memories that any other things you wanted to go into before we start talking about the his- the kind of development and history behind it? No, I think that's a good good segue to, to start talking about this kind of ragtag group of guys, of Kung Fu movie fans that made a video game that basically was just for them, which like mm-hmm. I feel like is kind of a, you know, a commodity nowadays like there's so much like we were, we were talking earlier off mic about like studio interference and all this stuff and so much money goes into video games nowadays like they were just like a bunch of guys that liked martial arts movies that were just like let's make this into a video game because street fighter 2 was crushing and they it was honestly what what street Fi- street fighter came out and i think they had pitched the idea to midway um and then they got turned down and then Street Fighter 2 came out, did gangbusters in arcade, and then Midway was like, wait, wait, that smells like money. Go ahead and make this video game, well, please. Well, they, they originally were going to base it off of a license of the Jean-Claude Van Damme movie Universal Soldier. Yep. That fell through because JCVD couldn't, like his schedule was, too, there was too many conflicts, so I guess they couldn't come in to digitize him. But that's where Johnny Cage comes from. It's meant to be as like an homage to Jean-Claude Van Damme. Uh, yeah. Jean Claude JCVD. Uh, yeah, so Johnny Cage is the same, same initials. Yep. Uh, and he let's was originally he was going to be like the main character before like Lu, Lu Kang kind of took over that mantle as the games kind of went on. Mm-hmm. Well, but yeah, it was going to be. Which is so it's so funny to me that like Jean Claude was going to be in this Mortal Kombat game. But then he ended up being Guile in Street Fighter, <laughs> the movie. So I was like, Ugh, really? Uh, what's the opposite of dodging a bullet? Taking a bullet? He really took a bullet on that one. <laughs> I will think of it this way. He was just shooting himself with smaller caliber bullets to build up a tolerance to larger caliber bullets. I guess so. <laughs> <laughs> I w- there was a thing I saw on Instagram. Someone asked me like, "What?" Or no, I put I did like ask me questions anonymously, and uh, someone asked like, "What's the worst advice you were ever given?" And it, someone didn't give me that seriously. It was like a joke, but I really loved the idea of like shoot yourself with smaller caliber bullets to build up your immunity to larger caliber <laughs> bullets, and I'm like. <laughs> I don't think I can post that on Instagram because of their, yeah. you know, the rules on Insta. Like, I'm pretty sure they would uh, take that down immediately if someone. Yeah, they'd be it. like, "So you're telling kids to go shoot themselves?" Yeah, later? exactly. You're banned for life. But no, so I mean, the Mortal Kombat is very clearly inspired by Bloodsport, which came out a few years earlier, and Blood. I mean, Bloodsport. I mean, it. it they're almost exactly the not in terms of I don't know about plot, but at least in terms of concept, they're very similar. Like this massive, larger than life tournament involving you know people from all around the world. In this instance, it's like otherworldly creatures and stuff like that. Um, well, that side, the other otherworldly side, comes from the, the other half of the influence was Big Trouble in Little China. Mm. That's where Makes the character sense. Raiden, Raiden, came from. Raiden is like looks exactly like some of those characters from Big Trouble in Little China. Right, he's just a dude in like a bamboo hat with electricity powers. Like literally, mm-hmm. they watched that movie and were like, "That do that exactly." Okay, <laughs> well, what what should we change so that it doesn't look like a ripoff? Nothing. Don't change a thing. Make it exactly the same. <laughs> I'm amazed <laughs> they did not get sued by like John. Well, John Carpenter's a video game fan. Like he tweets a lot about uh, playing different games and whatnot. Like you, if you follow him on Twitter, he's a huge gaming fan. It's kind of funny. I wonder if he had any input on the, the thing video game, which was actually excellent. Was that the PS2 game? Yeah, it was like PS2. I played it on original Xbox, but yeah, it was that era. 
he he might have but uh anyway so yeah there was the movie was supposed to be based off the universal soldier license it didn't really happen because jcvd's schedule wouldn't allow time for him to get digitized and you know put a digital like uh the scan of himself into the game so they Mm kind of shifted gears back to this idea that you mentioned before they wanting to do kind of this martial arts movie inspired fighting game and so mortal Kombat was born uh it was a very short development cycle. It only had, you know, like like we said, it was only a there was only like eight or eight people on the team. What I do love is that the the actors who portrayed the like the digitized sprites in this have since like become like gone on to do like uh, Danny Paseda Paseda is that if that is his name Pacina. Daniel, Daniel Pacina Pacina excuse me Master uh, he, Daniel. He goes around to like conventions and stuff like that. Um, yeah, I actually saw. I didn't get to listen to it, but I saw like a. I, there was a podcast recently with the with the actress who digitized. Uh, oh my gosh, what's her name? Sonia. Sonia. Yeah. Harry Hoskin. I believe so. Yeah. Yeah, she still like is in amazing shape. Like she still puts on the costume, the original one, and, and she like, still fits I saw something- it and everything. Yeah, like she's in incredible shape, and she's like, I don't even. She's got to be what in her fifties. She is. I think that's 52. Her. I might be thinking that Mortal Kombat three was Carrie Hoskins, but it might be that first one. She's but 52. Ed Boon and her are like best friends. Like they they post each other stuff all the time on Twitter, and like she's just still. He's always just like, yeah, dude. Like what? Look at her. She's still like ripped. She's she, legit Sonya Blade in real life. Sorry, you're right. She is Mortal Kombat 3. That's what she... Okay. Yeah. So she, I don't remember she was a cheerleader in name. NBA Jam. Really? Yeah. That's awesome. <laughs> That's kind of funny. Um, and she did uh, motion quick, capture for Killer Instinct in 2013. So there we go. Yeah. Oh, that's sick. She's done um, a bunch of other stuff, but I just those are ones that popped out to me. Yeah. Quick, um, speaking of Ed Boon and Sonya. So Sonya... And um, the eventual character Tanya are both named after his sisters, Sonia and Tanya. Oh, that was really? Cool. Yeah. Oh, that's kind of um, dope. She, yeah, she got Sonia got put into the game late. I think in earlier builds they only had, um, I forget the last two characters that were added. It might have been Kano and, and Sonia, but I'm not entirely sure. But I know there there wasn't a female character, and they got like a little bit of like flack about it, and uh, when they showed it to like when they had test audiences play it, um, and so they like rounded out the roster to what is it two three four seven characters the original was it scorpion sub-zero raiden Liu kang johnny cage sonya kano yeah johnny cage kano Liu kang raiden scorpion sonya blade and sub-zero yep yeah so seven with apparently you can uh fight reptile yeah reptile and i would love to talk about the uh we the secret you yes. want to get into that now what yeah. uh, no no let's let's continue talking a bit about the okay. history a bit more if there's any i mean I, just to just to make sure we wrap it all up and then we'll go into the gameplay um, yeah. oh there's plenty of i still got plenty of history <laughs> well the the name of the game it was it didn't really come to fruition until like towards the end of development it was like six months in and they had yeah. other names like let me see what they had the other names that were suggested were uh, Dragon Attack, Death Blow, Fatality, and my personal favorite, Kumite, based off of Bloodsport. Once again, right? Because of- uh, and uh, they nothing, nothing really worked. And so they, someone wrote combat like on there was like a whiteboard in the office, and someone uh, had written down the word combat on a drawing board, just I guess to sketch out ideas and whatnot. And someone wrote K over the C, and so yeah. no one really knows who wrote care of the team but they just liked it and it just kind of went along from there and it was apparently it was steve ritchie who was a pinball designer mm. I, what i what i find interesting is a lot of the guys who worked on this game started off at like williams pinball before they came over to well, I yeah guess, williams eventually well, worked its way into gaming because i think it was williams didn't they get absorbed into Bally Midway or something like that? I'm not sure. I think now. so, because Williams uh, did work on MK3. That would make sense then. So, yeah. and Ed Boon uh, and John, John Tobias, like, it's crazy. Like, if you look at the credits, like, the designers, Ed Boon, John Tobias, programmers, Ed Boon, artists, John Tobias, and John Vogel. Um, yeah. And then Dan Forden was Dan the composer. The sound. 
Yeah. Who do, who composed the themes like that? Dun 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 dun. Or that from the movie? That's not from the game, is it? No, no it's at least not, not the first one. No, they've actually never used the V Mortal Kombat theme song that everyone knows. I I'm pretty sure that I'm like 90 percent sure that that was never actually used in any of the games. It was only for the really? movie. <laughs> yeah, and, and it's it was more group... iconic. That is more iconic than any of the music from the game. I know. That's uh, funny. The group was called the Immortals. It's called. Uh, techno syndrome <laughs> wow all right yeah. well, well, when we do the movie we're gonna have to talk about that we might just do like you know what we might have to do the movie and the mortal Kombat 2 in quick succession next year and annihilation um <laughs> oh, okay yeah no fuck the annihilation i'm not i'm not torturing but what i'm talking about it's so bad because <laughs> it's we'll so see. bad <laughs> it is so bad uh, um it does have redeeming qualities <laughs> one or two <laughs> <laughs> but okay i don't have like i didn't have a lot of i was telling you this off mic i didn't have as much chance as i wanted to to do a lot of research for this uh yeah. <laughs> parenting man it's been a wild weekend I know. uh so I, I the stuff that i've talked about is the very limited bits of information that i looked up and i actually believe it or not listeners i did not just read off of wikipedia i uh <laughs> there's i i went to the did you know gaming page and actually was able to corroborate a lot of the stuff they said through other sources, including Wikipedia. So that was fun. But it, the there wasn't much that I was... I didn't Normally, I write down copious amounts of notes. Today, I just watched the video during my daughter's nap and hoped that I would remember everything because I was so swamped <laughs> with getting stuff done. But Andrew... If it's going to be any game, that, any game that we're talking about, that you're going to have that level of preparation, this is it because like... I've got it all just pounded that's, into my brain. That's why I had life, you on. So. Not that yeah. I wouldn't have to do the work, but just like it. <laughs> I, I was telling you off mic, man, this is like the, or maybe I even said it on my, I don't remember anymore. This is like the fifth, fourth or fifth recording session in the last like three yeah. or five days or whatever. It's been, a, and I have another recording session tomorrow. So it's just going to be a busy, it's been a busy week. But, uh, yeah. Andrew, go into some other stuff. You were going to talk about the digitizing, like how they kind of digitize the sprites and everything like that. Yeah, of something about the the very short development time that this game had actually is what I mean. They say like, yeah, when when you're kind of you know you got the fire to your butt, like that's when you do your your best work. And, and I'm definitely not condoning video game crunch at all. No. But they had eight months to do this, and so they they used what they had. And it ended up coming to fruition with a lot of the most iconic things of all time. And actually, specifically, this being the 30th anniversary um, of this game coming out, Ed Boon, I highly recommend going to check out Ed Boon's Twitter um, because he's been posting a lot of like behind the scenes stuff of how they were doing like the digitization. Oh, yeah, I did watch and, that somewhat recently. Yeah, it's it's so cool because they like they were basically recording the whole time because that they had to take the images of these people so you can literally hear as a, so if you don't know like they didn't do so street fighter is like sprites like people go in yes. and like draw the characters and animate beautiful them hand for, painted sprites oh yeah oh my god dude like freaking third strike is still like the greatest looking video game like sprite video game like i think i've ever seen that's what a um, lot of people say i I've, I've heard that on multiple other podcasts believe it or not yeah man the that oh god I'm betraying my Mortal Kombat roots by talking about Street Fighter. No, <laughs> I know the um, enemy. We've we've brought them up. It could only be one. <laughs> no, but so what they did for Mortal Kombat and like Killer Instinct and, and other games, they they took photographs of people like in costumes. They would be like, okay, do like a high punch, and then they would like take a photograph, and they did that. That's how they did the animations. They put they put them all together, um, and so while they were doing that, they were like recording, you know, everything, and there's you can see the moment like th what's arguably maybe the most iconic video game uh i know where you're going with this I remember of all this. time get, uh, scorpions get over here you can see the moment that that came to fruition because they're literally like oh man what would be cool you know how do we make these guys different they're talking about scorpion and sub-zero and like well this guy's got ice moves like you know maybe he has like a uh you know a, a spear or something and he could like you can see ed boone like working it out in front of the camera like yeah he's like you know throw the spear and like you know attach into the guy and like pull him over and he'd be just like you know say something cool like yeah like get over here or something like that and then you know they're all just like oh yeah i love that i love that 
and it's just so cool to see this stuff happening in real time and you can also see them uh doing raiden you know his his pointy hat and whatever every character had the animation of when they would um get the leg sweep you know they fall over backwards and do like the kip up and the character of Raiden, when he was doing it, his hat would always go flying off. They couldn't get the hat to stay on. And they were like tying it to his head and it just kept looking weird and um, just wasn't working out. And they were like, OK, well, you can hear somebody's probably Ed Boon or maybe John Tobias say like, well, he's, you know, made of electricity or whatever. So what if he just kind of like, like reassembles? And that's why to this day, Raiden's get up animation is just the, you know, the lightning teleport like beam thing because yeah. they couldn't get his hat to stay on when they were f- recording it for the very first time it's so cool how like such a little thing like that can become like so iconic i'm actually watching the some of the clips that you're talking about like then one he has the tweet he has pin, ed boon has twi- uh, the tweet ed boon has pinned right now is them talking about like it's like a two minute video of how Sonya Blade kind of came to be and it's showing the video of them recording the actress who is who portrays Sonya Blade and then kind of going through all the the motions and everything like it's really cool um yeah I I totally forgot that he was doing that because I watched a similar video to that Mm -hmm. that he did that's that's awesome. I I love it when developers are willing to celebrate their own history because yeah. too often they don't do that. Like, I mean, how all, it's it's like pulling teeth from Nintendo to get like they have a bizarre combination of celebrating their own history, but never in the ways that the consumers want. Uh- <laughs> yeah, it's like you have to do it our way or like, yeah, or like them they'll shut down tournaments like for Melee because people are using... Um, like code that allows for net play right. or something like that yep yeah it's like but well like, how do you you know it, then if you don't want people to do this then support you know support it release it again on the the nintendo e shop or whatever do you not want money <laughs> i don't know it, no it makes no sense but so it's just cool that ed boon does that and i completely yeah. forgot that he was doing that in honor of the 30th anniversary of the series like i'm actually going through um I'm actually going through his his Twitter timeline right now. He he retweeted a uh, the video of Jean Claude Van Damme dancing. You know that that gif of him like in like the tank top and like the jeans, and he's doing the weird hip yeah. thing. And uh, he's talking about if we could get Jean Claude on the on and like in a game or something. I don't know, but that'd be so and, funny, right? Does and have him meet Johnny Cage or something along those yeah. lines? Yeah, how crazy would that be? Uh, yeah. Yes. Well, so John Tobias. Mm. Okay. I was just no, gonna no. say. I was just gonna humble brag real quick. Uh, John Tobias retweeted my uh, Scorpion TikTok <laughs> that I made. Oh really? <laughs> yeah. That's if fantastic. you go to, not to like spoil it already, but if you go to TikTok, my just 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 my personal one, Andrew the Kinsey, um, you can see a funny little TikTok I made that doesn't have very many views compared to the other one I did of my broken mug that has like. 1.7 million views for some reason <laughs> um but john tobias actually retweeted it which was funny and then he like posted a picture of an actual scorpion and was like we actually just did get one in our house and i was like oh no watch out for those low pokes <laughs> that's fantastic that's so funny i i watched yeah. that you sent me that video too and i, I was did, like yeah. <laughs> i i totally thought for a second you were serious like you found a scorpion in your shoe i'm like are you yeah. shitting me what uh it was this guy it was this one I'm just going to have to put the, I'll just put the TikTok, like I'll stitch it in there so that people can see it. Also pin it to the top of your tweets or whatever. I think that'd yeah. be good. Uh, anyway, is there anything else you want to go into before we start talking about the game? I, I think that's it. I'm sure I'm filled to the brim with useless knowledge about this game. So if anything else comes up, I'll, I'll blurt it out, but that's, that's all that I can think of. Well, then I think what we should do to kind of go into the the gameplay itself is, like I said, Andrew, this is this episode is your episode to shine because I don't <laughs> have a whole lot of connection with the series. I don't have a whole lot of connection with I, I it's one of those things I've said it a bunch of times. I've been, excuse me, a bunch of times on the show. I love fighting games from a distance i don't (laughs) like playing them i find them infuriating i I don't enjoy the grind of because to play anyone 
almost even even the nicest person in the world i can see how much they enjoy beating me and i don't like i don't like that like it feels i don't like it it just seems dirty <laughs> i don't like that yeah um it, it, it never does. feels like a like a t- and i understand that like your friends aren't there to be your teachers they're meant to you're meant to have fun but i just don't find fun i i don't understand how to learn combos from playing other people because i don't right. it just you have to play so many times just to get anywhere near competent and it's just the the feedback loop of the gameplay itself is just not fun for me. It just isn't. I don't find any enjoyment from it. But I love yeah. the communities around fighting games. I love the lore mm-hmm. within different fighting games t- series. I like uh, see. I, I like watching people play them because I find competent people. I like watching competent players play the game. But when I try to sit down and play it, it's just like pulling teeth it's like i could be playing something so much more fun than this right now but that's (laughs) just to be clear listeners that's subjective so mortal Kombat fans i'm not attacking the game this is purely a fault of my own but regardless of all of this actually there is one major fucking thing we have not talked about before we get into the gameplay i can't believe we haven't the controversy we haven't talked about the controversy. i bet you there is probably there's probably people screaming into their earbuds being like, what? what? Talk about the controversy or a uh, more appropriate named for this. Since the Mortal Kombat episode, your ear bloods. Uh, <laughs> that was a dumb. Oh, you're just going to say controversy with a K. <laughs> oh, that's even better. That's a better joke. <laughs> ear bloods is a reference to a, a, a joke from another podcast. And I'm like, no one's going to get this. This is just for me. <laughs> it's a deep um, cut. For, to no one else except for me. if anyone's listening has listened to the james bonding podcast you'll know the reference but uh, <laughs> that's it uh anyway the controversy surrounding this game we talked about how violent this game was and that was controversial but what was more controversial is that this game specifically as well as a game called night trap was cited in mm. a court hearing in a congress hearing uh Basically, it was one of the games pointed to to show like this is corrupting our kids. The violence and sex in these games, even though Night Trap has like no sex in it at all. Um, it's creepy. It's weird and it's unsettling, but there's no sex in it per se. No. Um, but like Mortal Kombat it was definitely more violent than people were accustomed to for the time. So it's no surprising that it had that much. It, it brought that much attention to it but this game is directly like it caused the it it helped bring about the creation of the esrb the the game industry self-regulating body to show to for consumers to understand like okay what is the content in each of these games like are they meant for kids are they meant for teens are they meant for adults that kind of thing and this game is one of the reasons that it was this and night trap and other such things. And it, in fact, before the ASRB came to exist, Sega took it upon themselves. And that's why if you look on some Sega games, they have like an MA 13 rating, I believe, excuse me, I believe actually, yeah. I actually have, I think those, I was going to say, I think those old, yeah, my, my copy of mortal Kombat one over here has MA 13, my copy of mortal Kombat two has MA-17 listed on it. I guess the second one was more violent than the first one. Um, I, I'd say like so, I said, yeah. Okay, I, yeah. See, I I know nothing about that. I know enough about the series to know the characters' names and uh, obviously the, the some of the catchphrases. Get over here, Mortal Kombat, uh, Fatality, Babality. Finish him. <laughs> for, finish him, Friendship. Yeah. <laughs> all that what all that fun stuff it's interesting you, you mentioned the um like the the genesis one of the things that um due to all this controversy is that the super nintendo version of mortal kombat <laughs> you had to enter a code to have blood which is just to me like as a kid i was just like or, you know it's it's the inferior version for other reasons too but for the fact that it's like that's the point of the game is the blood and you had to enter a cheat code 
to be able to do to have the blood other than, you know or else it's like sweat it's like they do the blood splatter but it, they're gray instead it's like why is everybody yep, so sweaty why are they sweating out big globs <laughs> they're just they're just perspiring so much perspiring <laughs> excuse me yeah uh so no you're right and i complete we two of the biggest things we just did not bring up the controversy as well as the difference between the super nintendo and the genesis one like the it, the mortal mortal combat on the genesis was a big deal for genesis it really helped sell genesis consoles a lot quicker yeah. than super nintendo like up in, at this point in the console's life cycle it was outselling the super nintendo it like it's wild to think like it's it's a crazy thing to think that at one point in time, Nintendo had like what it was like an 80 or 90% market share of the entire video game market. Like they owned that. That was how much Nintendo was destroying the, not destroying them necessarily in a bad way, but that's how much Nintendo owned the video game market. They had like yeah. 80 or 90% of it. And then one generation later, Sega figured it out with the, well, Sega of America figured out how to market it in the US and it took they actually were winning from a chunk of the generation. But then around like 92 is when super Nintendo got street fighter two. And that was when it started to swing a little bit because it was a timed exclusive for super Nintendo. But Mm -hmm. then I would almost argue it evens out because they, well, 93 is when mortal Kombat came out on the home console, but, uh, Mortal Kombat on Genesis helped drive it too because no one wanted the the less gory version. Like almost any kid would be like, "Well, I want the one that's more edgy because you want to feel more adult and that kind of thing." Right. So that was the it whole. Was, point. It was like, "Yo, did you know that you can like you know pull somebody's heart out and like crush it in your hands? Mm-hmm. Like, oh, it's crazy." And this game very much revolved around like that kind of schoolyard rumors. Like there is, well, this oh, it actually yeah. kind of works out because it, it leads up to what we were going to talk about with the gameplay. Um, there was, like you mentioned before, there was a total of seven original characters with this game. Johnny Cage, Kano, Liu Kang, Raiden, Scorpion, Sonya Blade, and Sub-Zero. Um, Scorpion and Sub-Zero are palette swaps of each other. I believe, what, is it Scorpion like, kind of like a brown, silver, or sorry, brown and goldish type of thing? And then Sub-Zero obviously is blue. Uh, they all, all the ninjas were, were black and then a color. So like Scorpion is black and yellow. Uh, Sub-Zero was black and blue. There we go. Reptile was black and green uh but and could so you on. play as reptile in this first game you could fight reptile but could you play as you reptile uh i don't think so um but like most of the secret characters reptile as we know him today isn't he was just a green ninja that had scorpion and sub-zero's moves and was really fast he didn't have the acid spit or the force ball or the you know any of the you know the same thing with Jade he wasn't in Mortal his Kombat own character 2. yet yeah right he didn't really have an identity it's until mortal Kombat 2 he had the he would take the mask off and he'd have the lizard head and you know he'd eat your head mm. and shoot the acid and stuff um and then in that one like jade was a secret character but she doesn't have the identity that she did with the staff and the stuff that she has now she was just katana and melina uh together and really fast like it, that was a pattern with that <laughs> and so wait jade was in this game as well as a character you could fight no, no, she was in two. She was in two. Okay, sorry. I, two, I was just confused in, by that. As a, in a secret character way, the same way that Reptile was in one and then wasn't a true character until three, um, like properly. But yeah, like Reptile, actually, it was really funny. I, I wish I had gotten a picture of this, but I was driving, but I just took a road trip recently to get this tattoo and I went to Salem, Massachusetts. And uh, right when I got there, the so, you know, on the pit stage in Mortal Kombat, how there's the moon and like the clouds and stuff no, every now and then on. okay <laughs> so everyone else uh there's like uh cl- clouds and moon and stuff and like in the background and and if the if like a witch goes over the moon i think that's like the first trigger to fight reptile and i was like i was in salem massachusetts like you know very witchy place and i literally Mm -hmm. saw i looked up at the sky like as i was driving in and i was like this looks exactly like the pit from mortal kombat the original mortal kombat pit stage and i'm like a a witch very well could fly across the moon right now and it would be absolutely appropriate because of where i am and i was like i'm gonna fight reptiles soon this is awesome (laughs) (laughs) is it awesome and then you had to (laughs) no well no I mean, if that's how I die, if it's like, oh, by the way, Mortal Kombat characters are real and they killed somebody who was in 
in Salem, that'd be the way you want to go. Like, I guess that'd be fine, you know, <laughs> if that's how I go. <laughs> but yeah, you have to fight, uh, and then I think once that happens, you have to. I think you have to hit down and start or something, and then you have to get a. a I know. I know much more about the later games, but I'm I'm pretty sure the next thing you have to do is get a double flawless uh, on your next CPU fight without blocking. You have to. Oh wow! And those games were hard. Like those first couple, like were brutally difficult. So getting a double flawless against the computer without blocking, and then so when you're on the pit, and then you go to the bottom of this the pit where all the spikes are, and then you fight reptile. That's wild. Yeah. Well, so. That but that brings me to the big the the school ground rumor about the hidden character in this game, Air Mac. Mm-hmm. Andrew, yes. explain Air Mac to the listeners. <laughs> okay, so there's somewhat conflicting reports, but as I understand it, um, it was an error that happened on the arcade version uh, of one particular like arcade um, version of Mortal Kombat, the original. Um, where Scorpion would be red. It was a visual glitch. And then instead of his name, it said it said Ermac, like E-R-M-A-C. And I think it was just a, a code um, error message. It was like error um, something. Yeah. It's good for error macro. Yeah. Um, and so much like Reptile, that became like a thing like, oh, Ermac is a secret character, you know, whatever. And then would eventually become a proper character down the line two games later. Um, same thing with Scarlet in, in Mortal Kombat 2. There was like a glitch where Katana would be red. and But it, it, her name didn't change at all. And so people were like, oh, is that a secret character? Is that Scarlet? She wouldn't become a character until uh, Mortal Kombat 9 in 2011. So like hmm. there was a huge jump there. Oh, wow. But yeah, so, yeah. Yeah. That's one of my favorite things about this series is that like most of the characters have like really cool interesting things like that where they would start either as like a glitch or as a joke in terms of like uh in the way that like rain the purple ninja Mm -hmm. purple rain (laughs) started as like a joke character and then they made him real because people were like wait what was that because you know he was in the the attract mode of i think mortal kombat uh three or ultimate mk3 i think three and he's just on there for a quick second and there's a purple ninja named rain just as a literal joke because ed boone likes prince and so then they made him they made him a real character um or in the development of mortal kombat one there was a character who was going to be like a special ops he was basically um he was designed to be like basically what visually became Jax in the next game but his name mm-hmm. was curtis striker which they used as for a character in mortal kombat 3 so like there's a, there's so much of like every little thing it's almost like they they didn't waste anything when they were coming up with the, with this stuff it's like they so many little things became like these super popular characters i mean nowadays you know curtis striker is probably the most hated mortal kombat character because he's literal his whole you know mo is like police brutality and it's just like mm, maybe maybe not that today <laughs> <laughs> maybe we can just uh, never have him again <laughs> doesn't isn't sonya a police officer though Sonya and Jax are like special forces. They're like military. I still think so, like, it's so like uncomfortable to watch her just like shoot somebody in the head in the newer Mortal Kombat <laughs> games. Yeah. Well, one of the, a the things a little, yeah. One of the things that again that I also love about this game is that like like I said, it, these guys just loved kung fu movies and like John Tobias worked in comics and stuff. And so like he, he they they just made like a playground like of stuff that they would want to see and and mm-hmm. i saw it described in in a post somewhere that like mortal kombat especially like three onwards um because in mk3 they started introducing a lot of the like more modern stuff like the cyborg ninjas and like a lot of the like modern day soldiers and stuff like that and it's somebody described mortal kombat and, and it's present in the first game too someone described it as like what it feels like to be like a kid playing like with your toys like just your random assortments mm-hmm. of like you know, my GI Joe guy is is fighting this like you know lizard guy creature, and like who and there's like, especially as you get later on in the series, there's like there's vampires and there's like you know it's just like they're just all over the place, and just because it's the different realms and like, and even that like as another thing like there's so the lore of this series is so dense, and it started in in MK1, 
because that was something that they wanted to do that like street fighter wasn't doing which was like having stories for all these characters like remember in the arcades it would be like show you the character and like a little blurb about them so you had like a little bit of backstory or like you could start putting these you things had some together connection to them yeah you know it's like shang song was a uh sorcerer that came to whatever because of the whole 10 tournaments thing and like all that was just like side stuff that like they built up and i remember listening to it there's a hilarious podcast called mortal podcast that i love mm-hmm. that that ben meckler the host had um john tobias on and he said yeah we basically wanted storyline wise to have it be like star wars like we wanted it we didn't want to be like okay this is the beginning of the story they wanted it to be like yeah start like star wars Ep- this is episode four we're in it like this is like serious now we're in the 10th tournament you know a bunch of stuff happened beforehand and if we lose then like the earth will be you know absorbed and like that's what drew me personally to this game was these crazy characters and all these crazy storylines and obviously like the violence too because I was a kid like you said you know like you're a kid and you're just like I want to see crazy stuff I want to like rip somebody's head off and like cut their arms off you know sorry fanboy I, moment no 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 you end the fanboy moment on violence which I think is a little telling Andrew <laughs> <laughs> but no <laughs> but no uh, yeah it uh you're you're right it that type of storytelling is really uh, compelling. I like being able to, and it's very video game esque too. coming into a story in the middle of the story, because generally game storytelling, you can't do an intro, uh, an act one, uh, an act two, an act and an act three and a conclusion, or, you know, like an intro, uh, uh, or like, what is it? It's like the introduction and like the, the, inciting incident and then the rising conflict and then the conclude like the the climax and then the conclusion right. like particularly most games, for fighting games yeah most yeah. games start in the middle most games have to start in the rising action in the section where like shit's getting done stuff's happening um that's yeah. generally where games kind of take place and it's hard for games to because otherwise you're just it's it's just all exposition. Like it's very hard to tell the, get the introduction and the inciting incident uh, unless it's something quick and simple. Um, yeah. There are a few games that pull it off. I, I th- you know, thinking of like last of us is a really good example where they show the beginning of the zombie apocalypse and like the tragic event that happens to Joel in the beginning. And then it doesn't, you know, then it jumps ahead forward a bunch of years and you, so you understand the world that it's in right away and you understand yeah. everything you need to about Joel's character from that opening mission. Um, but uh, generally games start off in the rising action because that's where all the action is. That's where all the, and that's where the gameplay would be because gameplay is generally action based. So it it's interesting to, that. It, so it's smart that they, started it kind of in that moment like this is the 10th what did you say it was the 10th year is it and if we don't win this then you know we're screwed and humanity and the world is doomed um yeah from what i see here it t- like they call earth or earth realm right like that's like our world is earth realm yeah it's it's actually technically as i understand it earth realm is like our entire universe like our whole galaxy, like every our entire hmm. observable universe is all Earth realm. So like each realm is almost like its own different universe, like the Outworld and and Edenia and Order Realm and Chaos Realm and the Nether Realm. They're all just like different planes of like, and not or rather, it's not like of different existence. planes of like the same existence. It's like entirely different universes, which I think is yeah. super cool. And I want them to ex. ex uh, explore that a little bit more like in later games like mortal Kombat deception as janky as it was that story mode where you get to go through all the other realms and you play as like the little kid shujinko and he grows up and becomes like an old man like you get to go around and like live this whole life in all the realms like it was really cool to like to see all this stuff and see like everything that they had set up from this very first game in like 1992 to like see all, all this stuff like shown on screen and, and seeing it explore and, and talking about like how fighting games have a hard time with narrative like NRS, or, you know, NetherRealm Studios, who is what Midway is called now in, I hate that it was this game that did it, but Mortal Kombat versus DC Universe was the first one where they started to do the story mode where it was like, okay, we're actually going to tell a linear story this time, but it's like chapters. You play as, you know, one character for a little while, you see some cutscenes, okay. there's a, 
and then you go to the next one and that's how they do everything from like mortal kombat 11 or from uh mortal kombat 9 which was 2011 onwards it's like that linear story and they've crushed it at that like that's that's how you can tell a linear story in a fighting game and actually have it be enjoyable because before most fighting games and how most fighting games still are and back in the day like the original mortal kombat the only story you got was that attract mode stuff each character's little bio the little intro thing talking about shang song and trying to take over the 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 realms over the tournaments and then every character's like arcade ending had like a little bit of a but even that was just kind of a what if like this is what would happen if Sonya won the tournament. This is what happens if Kano won the tournament. And you don't know what's canon until the next game comes out. <laughs> so it's like... Okay, yeah. It's such a weird way that well, they had to do... Had to get around it. A lot of the lore for this first game was told via comic book. Um, there was... Yeah. Like there, there's like you were saying, there's some additional information about the characters and their motivations for entering the tournament. That's directly read off Wikipedia, but it's very concise. Um, <laughs> so, but they, like, but it, it's... Base, it's in the game it's built in that stuff is built into the game but the rest of it was from a comic book so did you ever read any of the comic books or get to like partake in any of that extra media yeah i remember um reading some of them as a kid at um my friend's house those those old ones where the character designs were like this like with the ninjas had like the weird little cat ear (laughs) thing Mm -hmm. i don't know if you can even see it but those old school style of like the gi joe kind of you know mortal Kombat um comics but the 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 next time i think i read any of the comics was not until like mkx which was like 2000 like 14 or something like that um but they're they're pretty good they're they're not you know anything to like write home about but it's fun i, I love mortal Kombat, so i'm like yeah give, give me all of it <laughs> like, and of course because it was the 90s they were like we have comics we have books we have really weird vhs one-off cartoons of mortal Kombat. there's a saturday morning cartoon <laughs> show a, a children's tv show cartoon mortal Kombat show called mortal Kombat defenders of the realm <laughs> which just boggles my mind because it's like yeah we're, we're not gonna have any violence but it's mortal Kombat. and i of course as a child when that came out was like yes give me all of that uh i think i think sub-zero is played by ron perlman in that show <laughs> what, really yeah it, or no, it might be that's striker kinda... because that, that was mk3 that era <laughs> that's so crazy funny. that's yeah. like the opposite of nes th- where like you know they would take r-rated movies and turn them into games you effectively they effectively took an r-rated game and turned it into like a pg like a, yeah. a pg cartoon like it's such a weird yeah. concept to like weird. do that and, reverse that's so funny yeah and I have to, I have to mention, I did say there was like a one-off VHS. If anyone who's listening or watching this wants to see the best worst thing in the world, like I'm talking like the room levels of like, this is the best and the worst thing. There's a, a Mortal Kombat VHS, like tie-in thing to the movie called Mortal Kombat, The Journey Begins. And it is the worst, like recycled animations, like horrible voice acting. Actually, the guy, like the guy who plays and this is perfect the guy who plays johnny bravo voices johnny cage (laughs) so he basically plays the same character but like the dialogue is awful it it sometimes feels like a youtube poop like it's that bad but it's the worst cgi you've ever seen it cuts randomly to like these cgi fights it was the like grand theft auto 3 style of you can't have hand movements but they have to do martial arts so like they always have one open hand and one closed fist and they're just kind (laughs) of moving around like this sorry audio listeners no no i was just gonna say the voice acting talent is no joke in this movie too jim cummings is shang Shang song yep um and <laughs> See, jennifer just, hale is sonya blade Sonya, yeah and that's that's so it's hard for that level of talent to be bad but somehow it is and that's just the writing honestly but it is hysterically bad it's only like a half an hour long and i still love it i have it i got it on vhs and i digitized it to a dvd so i can watch it whenever i want it's also on youtube i'm sure for free that is wild yeah that, that's a, so i've never heard of this I almost need to do an episode on this. Please do. <laughs> it's honestly like I want to watch it with somebody 
because every time I show somebody this, like I remember how hilariously bad it is. And I, I've been wanting to watch it again, but you know, I will watch it by myself, but I'd love to show it to somebody else if I can. You, you have to watch it, it right? and do like a little review over it. Oh yeah, I have it. <laughs> I'm looking at it right now. Yeah. We're going to have to do this. That's just, that's just yeah. something that's going to have to happen. <laughs> um, and I'll have to come over and watch it and yep. cry a little bit on the inside when I'm forcing myself to watch. But I also watch Captain N. So you know what? I have no room to cry because I, I force myself <laughs> to watch uh, yeah. questionable shows of questionable quality. Right. Uh, and at least, all the like, time. I said, like I said, with this, at least it's so bad that it's good. Like, you know, there's the whole bell curve thing of like enjoyability. Mm-hmm. So like, you know, you start at, at 10, you go down to zero in terms of enjoyability and then it goes the enjoyability goes back up to like negative 10 like the room is like a negative 10 there are bad movies that are you know in the single digits that are just like so bad but it's not fun to watch this is like the room level like i'd I'd probably say like this is like a negative eight or negative nine it's ace anyway like annihilation Annihilation is so bad that it's bad but i still like it because it's mortal Kombat. it's not you like it is a bit of a it's tough to watch because it's not good this is like it's hilariously <laughs> and amazingly bad. Now, a couple other things I wanted to, us to touch on. One, uh, what is the basic plot of this first game? From what I'm seeing here, it's basically it's just because we've we've talked uh, all around it, like we've talked about the tournament and whatnot. But like this specifically, the the basic like backdrop for this specific tournament is that. Um, I mean, the whole from what I understand, from what I remember, especially from the movie, Shang Tsung is banished to Earth realm. And he for 500 years, he has, with the help of uh, this monster Goro, won Mortal Kombat. And after a certain number of victories, his he will be able to go back to his realm and they will merge or something like that. Right. Like what's what's Um. the. Like we haven't we we've we've talked nebulously about how if the if Earth Realm loses this tournament then every then they're screwed. But right. we haven't really talked about what the actual plot is. Okay. I'm gonna do my best Ben Meckler impression. Please listen to Mortal Podcast. He starts every episode off like this. We're just gonna quickly rewind to the dawn of time. And <laughs> I'll I'll do a much faster version <laughs> of the real thing. But basically um, the, what the Mortal Kombat equivalent of God is, is like, it's called, was called the one being, no one knows how it became into existence. It just was, um, the one being created all these elder gods and they were like delegated to the different, like there was Titans that were like for time and, and space and stuff. And then these elder gods were delegated to like lower ranking, whatever, and relegated to the other the other realms and stuff and one day they were like you know what or no they're, they're, they weren't the realms yet they were just like subservient to the elder god and or to the one being and the elder gods were like hey we don't want to have a boss why are you telling us what to do uh we're gonna kill you and cut you up into a billion pieces and so they do and that's what becomes the realm <laughs> <laughs> yeah they take these these things called kamidogu daggers which become a thing in the later games they cut up they basically kill god cut it up into like a billion pieces and each piece of this God becomes the realms. And so they don't want the realms to reform, but they want life to have um, choice and uh, what is it like autonomy and sentience and stuff like that and, and free will. So they're like, okay, so we'll just create, it's like in a weird cosmic way, human nature or like the nature of life to want to conquer each other is really like the will of the one being want to re- wanting to reform itself. So they were like, so we don't want this to happen. Hmm. We do want free will. So we're just going to make it really hard. So if you want, if your realm wants to um, merge with another realm, which basically means like you take it over, it becomes part, like they literally just kind of like fuse, like the fusion dance from Dragon Ball Z. Yeah. They'll go. You have to beat it in uh, ten Mortal Kombat tournaments in a row, which is just you get you know your your greatest fighters from one realm and, and fight the one from another. If they win, then that's like you know one becomes the Mortal Kombat champion, and the champion of the realms becomes immortal, um, or rather like they can be killed, but they don't die from old age. So like the original Kong Lao was like five hundred years old because he was the like Mortal Kombat champion. So. Hmm. Outworld was like, yeah, okay, we're going to conquer Earthrealm. And so they won previous to the original 
Mortal Kombat Games tournament, they won nine tournaments in a row with the help of from Shang Tsung and Goro, you know, the big forearm guy. And so where the first tournament or the first Mortal Kombat picks up is like, okay, so this is our last chance. So that's why there's like, you know, the, the high stakes. Um, and, and Shang Tsung is like the sorcerer that's working for the um, emperor of Outworld who wants to absorb Earth, Earth Realm. <laughs> Earth World or Earth Realm. Yeah. Whew. Okay. And Shao Kahn is the emperor of Outworld. Yes. Okay. Yep. So that's the basic premise of the game. And Goro is like the big four armed, muscular, crazy dude from. I, was his design always like that? Or was it just something? Because I only know his movie design. Was his design in the game similar to what it was in the movie? Oh, yeah. Like they, they pretty much did it spot on. Um, the, the original game design for Goro was like a little bit more squat. Um, and he was, they did a claymation model for him. So he's like this like weird clay, like mm-hmm. Jason and the Argonauts looking guy. And, um, <laughs> so, but his, he originally, so for some reason, his story, his race, the Shokan are like half dragon, even though they don't have any dragon type features, but that's, I guess why they have. Would you say his nose kind of has like a dragon esque type <laughs> of vibe to it? I, I remember his nose was super weird. I don't think he even has a nose. Now that I think about it, he might just have like the little slits. Um, or maybe he does. I think it, it it has changed. His designs changed over the the years, but um, yeah, he's the forearm guy. They live for like thousands of years. They're super powerful. He was the champion uh, of Mortal Kombat and just like literally decimating everybody until uh, Liu Kang comes along and he's like, "Not today, dickhead!" and he kills him. <laughs> <laughs> That's exactly what happens. In yeah, the you're game, right. He just has a. Word. He doesn't look like a dragon at all. I'm I'm looking at a picture of him now. He's yeah. just got like an eight pack of abs, <laughs> right? And like two sets of like areolas. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's very uncomfortable looking. Classic video game design. Funnily enough, they do oh, eventually yeah. have a character named the Dragon King Onaga, who has nothing to do with Goro's race and actually is more dragony. <laughs> Hmm. He's like the big bad from, from later on. Anyway. Um, okay. Uh, so that's the basic premise of the game. I just wanted to kind of talk about like what the general, um, like the general story was, because we, we kind of talked around it nebulously and kind of talked about all the world building that Mortal Kombat has done. And that this game set up like it by the fact that it started off in like, this is the, the 10th and final time of the Mortal Kombat tournament. Otherwise earth realm will be merged with out, out world, outer world or out world. It's just outworld. world. Um, it, it allows them to expand upon it greatly. Like they can do so many different things before, after they can do whatever they want with the story. With all of that said, I do think we should at least, at the very least, talk a little bit about just the core gameplay. And I know it's hard to kind of talk about fighting games uh, in terms of gameplay, because for someone like me, the layman, who doesn't know much about it, it's just, you know, you have one character on one side, another character on the other, and then whoever wins, like you have punches, you have kicks, low punches, high punches, like low kicks, high kicks, depending on the game, depending on how each game is designed and you have special moves and it's just, it's someone like me who doesn't know fighting games. It's very simplistic, but I understand like, especially cause I know I have you and a bunch of other friends, uh, Casey and my friend Jay, like each of you are like masters in specific fighting games. Casey with Tekken, Tekken you know. Jay with soul Calibur you with mortal Kombat, so i think a good way to approach this for people like me who don't notice the subtle subtle differences other than the difference in like special like special move names um what separates mortal Kombat from other fighting games like what makes it what is it's you what makes it unique um besides the gore i should say like what at least for at least for you i know it's going to be hard because i don't know how well you remember the first game but like we're we're, we're trying you know we're sticking to the first one well you know what let's do this what does mortal kombat one do different than street fighter 2 that's because that Um, that that was its contemporary right that's that's a that's a uh, great place to start um so funnily enough when street fighter 2 came out i remember hearing that ed boon 
was playing it obviously because like it was street fighter 2 it was huge and he was like i want to do everything that this is game is doing but like in the opposite <laughs> so like um street fighter <laughs> is very theatrical and like the what later even more so later on but in, in street fighter 2 it was, it was much more like colorful and kind of cartoony and and mortal Kombat wanted to take like a more grounded like adult approach because home home consoles were were coming out and so like arcades really weren't so much like for kids anymore so like we can make something like super violent and make it like the movies that we like you know mortal Kombat's like or for like street fighters like you know that's like for for kids and we want to do something for adults so just the fact that it's a little more grounded and it's a little more um i would say i would say it's a slower a bit slower pace than um street fighter and that still pretty much holds up today but really it was the the, the art style i think that was the, the the just the presentation of it was really what set it apart um yeah not being quite so strangely proportioned like kind of anime look and uh, honestly that's really just the difference between eastern and western game design um but they wanted it to like look real and feel real like as much as possible and so like with that came like okay well if p- two people are actually like in a fight there's going to be blood if, if they're out there to like fight for themselves and for their, you know, we have ninjas and, and military people and, and monks and stuff like they're going to be killing each other and like beating the literal like piss and blood out of each other. So yeah, it was really just a presentation standpoint and a um, not so much of a gameplay standpoint. Um, they, they, they divert quite a bit more as the games go on, but yeah, I mean, fighting games in general are, are just about, um i know you said like they're they're all kind of like simplistic but it's more of just getting in the mindset of your opponent and like predicting what they're gonna do and it's as much as i hate chess like it does kind of feel like chess sometimes because you like want to think ahead because you know you're expecting them to jump so like you're getting ready to do like an anti-air move or like you think they're gonna like shoot the low fireball so you're getting ready to jump to predict their you know um and this this game kind of had in a much more simple way it it set the um precedent for the kind of grounded like spacing based game that like they kind of honestly went back to with mortal kombat 11 um was a very and and honestly this is why because everything's subjective this is why some people didn't like mk11 was because it was very slow and it's not crazy over the top it it is in terms of um like when you do the x-ray moves in the the uh fatal blow the violent stuff yeah and yeah the fatalities and stuff yeah um but it's a very much like a grounded type you know footsies and spacing and yeah so I, like you just brain farted there for a second <laughs> i did and then like you started to or yawn my, like maybe or my yawn <laughs> yeah um yeah i didn't i didn't want to just like keep harping on the same on the same thing but yeah okay um so then i guess my next question would be the big draw to Mortal Kombat that you know the violence was was it, but the fatalities specifically, mm-hmm. the fatalities were super creative. Like they are definitely violent, but I think what's cool about the fatalities is that it, in a weird morbid sense, it allowed the developers to be super creative with their kills. Oh, yeah. it, it, it's very much kind of like a horror movie in that sense. Like it's almost like they're designing the next kill in a horror movie. Yeah, um, and each character. Like what each character is their own serial killer, and how would this serial killer pull a uh, you know a, a Jason from Friday the Thirteenth and find a creative way to kill right. somebody Who's or whatnot? Um, <laughs> oh, I forgot he is. I forgot yeah. they added him. That's yeah. <laughs> and then in, didn't in like Mortal Kombat like uh, the the one that like is it Mortal Kombat nine or whatever the one that came out in like two thousand and eight or nine or something 11. like that. If you played it on PS3, you could get Kratos in it, and if you played yeah. it on 360, you could get, could uh, you get Kratos, Master Chief. That would no, no. Kratos was the only uh, uh, console specific character. No, and there was, was something that you did for. I could have sworn there was something for um, for Xbox 360. I could have sworn. I don't think so. I don't remember then. Um, I will try to. Um, you could get Freddy Krueger as a as a DLC in there, but DLC, I, yeah. yeah. Oh my gosh! All right, I'm going to have to double check on this because <laughs> I could have sworn you that you could of, get 
So Soul Calibur did that. No, you're right. I'm seeing it now. Yeah, it that that's interesting. So only the Xbox did nothing. <laughs> they just PlayStation's yeah. like, we'll give you Kratos, which <laughs> to be honest, fits with the oh, world of 100%. Mortal Kombat. His stage was awesome. But, um, he got his own stage, and you could, you know, in God mm-hmm. of War, when you like do all the like button prompts, uh, what is it, quick time events to like kill the bosses and stuff. You do that if you do a stage fatality on his. You can choose like all these different traps to like drop your uh, opponent into. Oh, and you, like, that's push cool. The buttons to do it. It'll be like square, circle, triangle. It's pretty cool. But he was also busted as all get out and was like banned from all the tournaments because his character was too good. Uh, I would not be surprised by that. Okay. Um, the the but back to what I was saying about fatalities. Mm-hmm. I guess my question kind of the fatalities kind of leads into that. What were the combos like in this? Because, you know, I think about, you know, when you do a Hadouken in, in like Street Fighter, I always, it's like a quarter circle and then you, I forget what it is. Yeah. So, like, what was the type of moves or inputs that you would have to do for Mortal Kombat? Was it the same kind of quarter circle type of things or was it like, you know, up, down, left, right? Or like, wh- what types of inputs, I guess, specifically would you have to? input in order for fatalities i understand it's different for every character but just kind of in general in in general it's actually pretty um pretty uniform across the board that's that's another thing that um differs um street fighter and mortal Kombat. like you said street fighter hadoukens are like quarter circle you know you think about like the arcade sticks like i have here like they're designed for like sweeping movements um but they really Mm -hmm. wanted to focus on like the home because things were moving away from the arcade sadly um so they really wanted to focus on like the home market and so like their special moves are all most of them are like two directions like you do like uh sub-zero's ice is like down forward not like a hadouken like quarter circle down forward but literally just like down and then forward and then a punch scorpion's spear is like back back low punch so it was usually like like a, a double in a back or double forward or like a down forward or a down back and the the fatalities were like three buttons four buttons like uh, sub-zero's like spine rip is like forward down forward high punch like they weren't that hard to do but in the earlier games you only had like maybe two seconds to do it like when we went to we went to that arcade recently we were playing mortal Kombat, and i was like trying yeah, desperately yeah. To, like I, I felt like such a fake fan because i was like i know the fatalities but they literally was like it'd be like finish him and then your <laughs> character falls over and it's like ah you get like such little time to do it which is that's why it was so like if you could if you could do it and you're ready for it and you could do these crazy like finishing things because no other games had this. Street Fighter had the like you know you, you get the last hit and it does the slow mo like oh uh, uh, do yo when yeah this was like a final f you to your opponent. I'm going to embarrass you in front of everybody. You could rub it in your opponent's face a little bit. Like I beat you, you're 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 dazed. So now I'm going to get to beat the shit out of you or do a fatality. Right. Yeah, and that was like you said, the thing that really differentiated this game from anything, and honestly, is what made it famous. Because that's it's the violence, it's the ESRB, the controversy, and what it's still, you know, what they still uphold to is like the most comical and over the top, like violence you can legally put <laughs> on a video game. I mean, the newer ones are just nuts, where you see like X-ray things of like you know bones getting broken and all this other wild stuff um but i think we should start wrapping this up we've gone on about the story the gameplay we've gone on about its development history i think we should wrap it up here with some final thoughts real quick um i don't have much for myself on this one i i listeners the i do these types of episodes here where my guest honestly does a lot of the heavy lifting not because i'm necessarily disinterested but it's just something where i try to bring on people who are passionate about game a specific game or super knowledgeable andrew here happens to be both and also he's one of my closest friends so oh. it, it all kind of works out but the the reason besides just having them on is it's for me as well not just to make the episode better otherwise you'd be listening to me spout a whole bunch of nonsense that i don't know that i pretend to know about but this is more for me too because now i'm getting to learn about the the game and the series whether it's mortal Kombat or otherwise so 
I like these types of episodes. So like my final word on Mortal Kombat is I have a much deeper appreciation for the lore specifically. Mm. Like, I had no idea about the whole creation of the universe and how there was like this godlike being that got killed by his own creations and split up into these daggers. Like what a fucking wild story. I love it. That's um, the tip of the iceberg too, man. It gets wacky. I believe it. <laughs> we should just do a whole lore dump episode. Just Mortal Yo. Kombat lore. Mortal I lore. Will, I will do it with zero prep. <laughs> I will do it tomorrow if you want. <laughs> but yeah, I feel the exact same way. Like that's why my YouTube channel is called The Experience Point because like I want to hear other people's experiences. I want to share experiences with people. I have a segment that's called Experience Share. Like I literally like I want to have people on and be like, you know, like you would be good to have on and be like, "Okay, Josh, gush about Ratchet and Clank for an hour. Like get like I want to feel your passion much like you did for me with Mortal Kombat. I have friends, you know, like Casey would be good to have on for Tekken. Like literally just be like, the floor is yours. Like, why do you like Tekken so much? Give me like, you know, whatever is the equivalent of like an elevator pitch, but for an hour long, just gush about what you love about it. Tell me your favorite memories. And like, that's why I think the way that you and I do like our content, like it just fits so well together because it's, yeah, we just love like, you know the nostalgia the everything that goes into it not just like oh yeah you know like this game came out and like this is the development and whatever it's like that's a cool part of it but you and i both are like heavily focused on like why to you specifically is it so important and i'm so happy to hear that you're like the emotional connection hearing about the this lore now and like how crazy it is like i i love that i love getting to share that (laughs) one of the things i try to do with my show is I want to be informational. Like that's why we talked about its development. We talked about how it kind of came to be with, you know, the whole originally going to be the universal soldier adaptation and all that whatnot. And cause that, that stuff is interesting. Like I think video game history is fascinating, but with that said, if you're just reciting cold facts, then you might as well just go to a university for game history. You know what I mean? Like it, right. it feels that I don't want it to be the textbook. Um, yeah, so there's hundreds of YouTube the best... videos about like facts, you know, but like exactly experiences are going to be different from person to person. So that's why there's not that's just why one I podcast. Want... That's, you know, exactly. Well, and that's why I like to combine the two. Like, I I want yeah. to have like you need to hear an emotional connection. It, there's there's an uh. There's a really great YouTube channel I've showed I showed you before that every frame of painting YouTube channel. Oh my god, and yeah, that they Edgar talk, Wright video is so yeah, good. They did an episode on he's Tony uh Zhao, Tony Zhu. I don't I'm so sorry Tony, I don't know how to pronounce your last name, but he he the channel has been uh inactive for a number of years. He hasn't he's kind of he it's still up but he's not doing anything with it. Um he did a video on Chuck Jones, though, the, you know, the hmm. one of the most prolific Looney Tunes directors Looney Tunes and guy, yeah. animators. And he, he talks about how one of the like one of the elements of comedy is it has to be grounded in some semblance of reality. Like if you don't like if you don't know how something is like if you don't if you can't relate to something, how do you know it's supposed to be funny? And that's kind of the same thing with this show to tie it back to what I'm the point I'm trying to make is if you don't know something is if you don't have an emotional connection with something or you don't see that emotional connection that someone else has with it, how do you know it's supposed to be important? And we can go on and on about the historical context. Like there, there are a few landmark games, like regardless of your opinions on like super Mario brothers, it's one of the most important games of all time. And same, I would argue to a degree with mortal Kombat as well, regardless of if you like mortal Kombat or not, it helped create the ESRB, which is monumental in game history. Yeah. But when it's not one of these games that has like some landmark, like it is a momentum shifting event how do you know that a game is important? Well, you need to have that emotional connection. So if you don't have it, hopefully the person on the episode does. So like, um, that's why I try to find guests that for, for specific episodes where it's like, these are, I, whenever someone says like, Hey, I'm interested in coming on. I'm like, send me a list of your favorite games. Mm -hmm. I don't care what they are. I could know, everything about the game i could know nothing about the game but i need to know what your favorite ones are because 
I can talk, I can, I'm interested in your history and the history of the game. That's what interests me. But I can't, like, if that's all I have, I can't f- hold a whole c- podcast on my own. So I want something you're passionate about. And I've made the mistake of having some people on where I'm like, hey, I want to do this episode. Would you be interested? And they say, yeah. And then we get on and they have nothing to say about it. <laughs> yeah. Um, I'm, I'm not going to mention names. I can tell you off mic who I'm it's thinking me. of. But uh, no, it's oh God, no. <laughs> You're like, oh, no, uh, God, you yeah, can never no. shut up. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, no. Uh, but I, like I said, my experience and my final word, my final thoughts on the original Mortal Kombat, one of the most important games of all time. It helped create the SRB, but also it created this amazing, crazy franchise that's still one of the most popular fighting game franchises today. So, Andrew your final thoughts and this might be a long-winded one because mine was pretty long too so what are your final thoughts on mortal Kombat? on specifically this first iteration of this game you may be surprised it's actually pretty short uh i'm actually in a similar boat as you the the very first game i understand i appreciate it for what it did it, it was the launching point for one of you know probably my second favorite franchise of all time um and but the but it's the game itself is like not my favorite one it's probably aside from some, like maybe mortal Kombat versus dc universe it's maybe my least favorite mortal Kombat to play like to go to go back and play just because i prefer like two and three like ultimate mortal Kombat three or the newer ones like you know mk9 um but like you said the importance of it the like it kickstarting the ESRB, like kicking it in the butt and being like, okay, we need to start taking video games as seriously as we do movies. We need um, to exist. That's what it did. It's like, yeah, it's, right. it was a non-entity. They're like, oh yeah, we should probably exist. So consumers know <laughs> what content is in games. Yeah. But I think that also paved the way for more stuff like it. Cause when it came out, it was like, look at these crazy guys just making this like super violent stuff. Again, there was violent video games, but this was on a new level. And it was kind of like, was like, no, we need to take this medium seriously. We can make essentially R rated, you know, video games and like, you know, things in this art form, just like you have E rated ones. And you know, there's just like a PG movie. Like there's games for kids. There's movies for kids. There's games for adults. There's movies for adults. It's, it's all across the board. It's it's a medium. It's not a genre. It's kind of like how when people are like, oh, I don't really like get anime or like I don't watch animation. It's like that's like saying you don't like guitar. Like there's so there's super soft guitar. There's like crazy hardcore metal guitar. Like it's it's not it's a it's not a genre. Animation is not a genre, you know, but oh, I uh, would argue it's not necessarily it's not like you don't like guitar. That's like saying you don't like music because it has because it's not or maybe not. That's not the best because it's a visual medium. But it's like that's like saying, like, I don't like uh, TV shows because I don't like they're only 30 minutes long. It's like, you know, it's just a different visual medium. It's a guitar is like a specific instrument. I would say if you're comparing it's animation is its own medium right because right. it's well, I, similar to film but it's interesting to just write off an entire me- like i don't like animation it's like i don't like that entire medium it's the same thing when people say i don't like reading i don't like books it's like really like i'm sure you like some maybe you don't like reading but to say you don't like books is is interesting right i think i say um guitar because it's like if if the the correlation is like entertainment in general or like things that you watch like tv shows movies and and things like that like that's the equivalent of music and saying like well i don't like um animation that's like writing off a whole it's not a genre it's not like saying i don't oh, like oh i see metal. what you're saying so if, if, the, if the element. band is if the whole band is tv's movies and animation you don't like animation you're writing off one instrument of that band right for all which is weird purposes. to say like well, animation okay. can be anything just like guitar, you know, is just one instrument that can be like done in so many different ways. There's animation and the same for like, like relating it to video games. There's cartoons for kids. We were talking about Bluey for a lot off mic because you're a dad. Like there's animation for kids. Oh, there's animations show. for adults. You that, don't like, have to be a dad to love that show. I'm just that's saying. That's true. But that's that's why you watch it. Um, yeah. but I do hear that it is excellent. Um, it is like, very good. 
anyway, to, to bring it, to bring it back, like I appreciate, uh, the first Mortal Kombat game for what it did and its legacy. It's not my favorite one. Uh, I, I don't, I like playing it because it's like, Oh, this is cool to see like where it came from, but I, I get over it pretty quick. I don't sit and have like really intense matches with people. Like when I, when I play them and have be like, Oh man, that was like a really good, you know, kind of like the original street fighter. It didn't really become. No one started, knows the original Street Fighter. I know, even more so, yeah, than like <laughs> Mortal Kombat. Again, like it took a bit for the momentum, I guess, to to catch on and really like find itself. But what it started can't maybe one of the most influential video games of all time. Yeah, I mean, a hundred percent. I think that's like we, I think we were just talking about to... like like <laughs> yeah, that's a good place to stop. Let me continue. Uh, <laughs> we were talking about like all the iconic, maybe some of the most iconic um, phrases of, of any medium, any entertainment medium, like everybody knows like finish yeah. him, get over here, flawless victory, you know, fatality. Like even if you don't know video games, you're like, Oh yeah, that's mortal Kombat." You know, like I'm, I'm struggling to think of like a phrase that's so video game besides like a specific video game. Like you can say like game over or something like that, but like a specific video game that has like the, lasting power of like in in like immediately recognizable of just like oh yeah get over here oh yeah finish him like in terms of sound bites the only other thing i can think of is the mario theme right but that's music that's not just like a like, i know phrase. but i'm just saying sound and i'm saying all sound in general yeah I mean, like for people who don't know video games they but they know something is from a video game I can't think I'm sure there is something. It's just things that are popping to my mind right now. I'm trying to think of like what other bit of either music or sound bite would someone hear. And even if they don't know video games, they know it's from a video game. They know it's from a specific game. Yeah. All I can think of is Mario Mortal Kombat. Obviously the, you know, the Mortal Kombat, it kind of gives it away in the title, but like the fatality thing, like, or get over here. It's just, it's ingrained into public psyche. It's, it's crazy. Yeah. Into the zeitgeist. That's what I'm trying to say. <laughs> it's certainly part um, of mine. But that should be a good place to wrap yes. up this episode. Um, let's let's go through our uh, social medias and our plugs and whatnot. Andrew, where can everybody find you online? And uh, what would you like to promote? You can find me personally across the board on social things. Uh, I'm trying to be more active on TikTok, social. which is a lot of fun. Uh, it's just Andrew the Kinsey uh k-i-n-s-e-y uh, if you want to follow the experience point um and maybe leave an occasional uh supportive comment to let me know that people are actually watching these things and should, that i should do more um we're across the board on youtube and twitch and instagram and all the socials are just at the experience point so t-h-e-e-x-p-p-o-i-n-t all right. And as usual, you can follow me on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram at still loading pod on all of them. If you want to email me, you can email me still loading contact at gmail.com. If you want to support the show, you can do it a number of ways. You can give it a five star rating or review on Apple podcasts or whichever podcast app you use. Cause that helps more people find the show and it makes me feel warm and fuzzy. And I like feeling warm and fuzzy. Um, and of course, you can support it monetarily over at patreon.com slash still loading pod for a dollar a month. You'll get all the episodes at a higher bit rate a few days earlier and access to a patron exclusive discord for five dollars a month. You get all of that plus two bonus episodes a month that are about 20, 15 to 30 minutes, depending on topic. And it ranges from ideas of retro magazine reviews where I take old video game magazines and do reviews of the weird stuff they did back then, or uh, just what games I'm playing currently that I couldn't fit into a new episode. And also now there is a new series, a new show called still bonding where my friend Erica and I, Erica Gwynn from the monster madness podcast, we are going through every single James Bond movie and dissecting them all. We're talking about the best, the worst, the problematic, the stuff that surprisingly holds up, all everything in between. There's a lot of problematic in the old <laughs> things. Let's say, be real. The whole but, series. Oh, on yeah. Just the, Lots, <laughs> oh, I mean, you could. It would be insane. But uh, I mean, dude, the first movie, they make up the villain and the and the femme fatale in the they're white actors who they try to make look Asian. Yeah. Uh, it's it's there's issues there's issues <laughs> but you get all that for five dollars a month that's it five dollars and you get all that um but if you 
are low on funds and you want to support a better cause than myself, go to the Bit by Bit Foundation. The Bit by Bit Foundation is a nonprofit organization whose mission is to put video games and video game consoles in the hands of kids receiving inpatient care at hospitals. So if you want to support them, go to bitbybitfoundation.org and consider donating. And that will do it for this episode of Still Loading. Andrew, thank you for joining me. Thank you, sir. And I will see you all next time.